So, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Commissioner Tools Virtual Forum for September 10th. Tonight, our topic is the Commissioner Training Continuum, and our guest speakers are uh, Bob Hoffmeyer and Dave Hornadell. Both are members of our Commissioner Tools Focus Group. And uh, we have uh, set the system to put everybody on the broadcast mode. So we do that so we don't get that inevitable background noise from people that forgot to mute their phones. And uh, we get feedback when that happens. If you've got questions, please feel free to send those questions to either myself. Uh, I will try and monitor those uh, as much as I can as the training session goes on, uh, or to Dave and Bob. And of course, we're going to uh, get to those questions all at the end if we don't get to them during the session itself. And most likely, we will hold off answering those questions until the end because we may discover that we've already uh, going to cover that particular topic. So, uh, in any case, we're about ready to start. And uh, um, at the Rick, end, we'll Rick, also. Uh, you, uh, yeah, go ahead, Bob. You want to specify that you're actually Deborah Kendrew tonight so they can send the, the messages to you. Uh, that's a very good point, yes. Uh, while I'm Rick Hillenbrand, um, as was pointed out by somebody earlier, I'm logged in as Deborah Kendrew tonight. So you'll have to send them to Deborah as opposed to Rick. And um, that's a good point there. And then uh, as a reminder, our last 15 minutes will be allocated to open questions. and. Uh, we'll also put up at the end a few slides that will give you uh, additional information that shows emails and web addresses that will help you if uh, you are uh, not familiar with them and you need to make note of them in order to follow up. So with that, I'm going to move on to our second slide. And it's over to you, Bob. All right. Thank you, Rick. Um, we're going to be talking about the training continuum tonight, which is basically going to be a a review of some of the basics, but we're actually going to start talking about what do we do next kind of and start talking more and more about the why. So when we think about training, we hopefully, we realize that we actually need to learn the why of the creation of commissioner tools, not just the mechanics of how to make entries. If all we do is train our commissioners for the mechanics of making entries, we'll have nothing more than the UVTF system that we worked so hard to move away from. We need to be certain that we're addressing the values and benefits of commissioner tools with training that goes beyond the process of just being bean counters while simply making entries for the sake of checking off a box for JTE scores. The videos and documents that have already been created are already available. They go into great detail about how to make entries, where information is located, and how to use the system. So that part's pretty easy, the click and point part, we'll call it. But for effective training to take us to the place where we need to go, we need to embrace commissioner tools and know that this is the way to deliver effective unit service. Tonight, we want to try to help you have a bit of a light bulb moment, you might say, and understand more by laying out how to better train our commissioners to, develop, to deliver the promise of great unit service. So as we dig into the two different areas of training, we, we want to discuss, we want to talk about going beyond the mechanics and going beyond the basics. We want to be sure you're training your commissioners about the benefits and values of commissioner tools, not just the clicking point of how to make entries. The more you and your commissioners understand commissioner tools, the less it's going to seem like an exercise in making reports, piling up data, and being bean counters. Dave, why don't you take it? Okay, uh, as we take a look at, at uh, Commissioner Tools, up to this point, much of the focus of our training for Commissioner Tools has been on the button pushing, you know, navigating through the tool and, and concentrating on which button or icon to click. But now it's time to start learning why it's important to understand and use Commissioner Tools. The tools were developed to enable commissioners to provide unit service quicker and more efficiently. So in order to get a better understanding, let's relook at, at our mission. This is the unit service mission for commissioners. 
Now, this mission statement may be a little bit different than, than what you've seen before. It's a shift away from the historic mission of helping units succeed to a more definitive statement focused on impact, which is the retention and growth of units. And that should result from effective unit service. Now, we employ these methods to accomplish our unit service mission. Now, scouting serves youth best wherever there's a trained and engaged key three. A unit key three should include three individuals trained and registered to serve as unit leader, committee chair, and chartered organization representative. Now, they have to meet monthly and be supported by a unit commissioner. Now, the commissioner tools also applies technology to unit service, provides commissioners with essential information about the units that they serve. For example, a unit leadership, membership, training status, roundtable participation, and so on. Uh, Commissioner Tools enables the collaborative development and management of the unit service plan. And the unit service plan is a better way to provide unit service. Now, based on a collaborative assessment of unit health, commissioners develop a service plan that's customized to respond to a unit's strengths and needs. And it draws upon the resources that are available within the unit, its chartered partner, and through the district operating committee. Now, through ongoing unit contacts, commissioners capture periodic updates of the collaborative assessment of unit health and ensures the plan for improvement is moving forward. And continuous recruiting and frequent training opportunities are required to ensure that an adequate number of trained commissioners are there to serve all units. And when an adequate number is not available, then we need to shift the resources to allocate those to the units with the greatest needs so that we can increase unit retention. Now, Commissioner Tools provides benefits to commissioners in four areas. It's kind of the what's in it for me thing for unit commissioners in particular. It enables easy access to actionable information. Now, commissioners in real time will be able to use dashboards to view summary information about a unit's membership, the status of its leaders' youth protection and position-specific training, their participation in district roundtables, and the unit's current needs and opportunities to improve performance. And as additional My Scouting tools come online, uh, things such as advancement and charter renewal, the commissioners will have direct access to that information as well. Now the tools also enables an improved focus on our primary objectives. Commissioners are going to be able to work together with a unit's key three to develop a unit service plan, an assessment of the unit's strengths and needs, and to prioritize a list of action items, uh, including accountability and target dates for completion. Now, completion of these tasks enables continuous improvement in planning and budget, membership, program, and volunteer leadership. And through ongoing unit contacts, commissioners will be able to identify unit needs and capture periodic updates of the collaborative assessment of unit health and ensure that the plan is moving forward. It supports roundtable administration and promotion. Well, roundtable commissioners are going to be able to publish the dates of their upcoming roundtables, their agendas, unit participation information, and note key developments. This enables unit commissioners to help effectively promote participation in the roundtable. And then it supports administer com 
administ commissioner uh, administration, mainly for, for those district commissioners out there, uh, you're going to be able to assign unit commissioners to specific units and identify the training needs of your commissioners and also identify units that need a commissioner assigned to them. You're also going to be able to identify newly formed units so that you can assign a dedicated new unit, unit commissioner, to those units. Now, we've all seen these four things before, but here I've kind of changed the order slightly, and you see that the red letters kind of form a, a mnemonic that helps us remember them more easily, CSLR. In this list, contacting units is first, because in my mind, nothing else in commissioner service can happen to provide unit service until a commissioner contacts a unit. Now, as we mentioned, the first thing that has to occur is a unit commissioner making contact with a unit. And the contacts need to be as a friend and not as the district super spy so that we can keep in mind what's best for the success of the unit. You need to operate quietly and in, in the background so that we can gain an accurate picture of the health of the unit. Now, to, dem to develop the necessary working relationships with the unit key three, uh, our contacts do need to be frequent. But the main focus of our contacts is to strengthen the capabilities of unit leaders. And Commissioner Tools is there for the commissioner to make a record of his or her observations, thoughts, and interactions. And then over time, these contacts, especially in the form of a detailed assessment, start to become the building blocks of the unit service plan. Now, the unit service plan becomes the roadmap that commissioners use to support a unit's growth through its journey to excellence. The unit service plan is a tool to help strengthen a unit and enable it to offer the best possible program to the youth it serves. It's a collaborative effort between the unit's leaders, its chartered organization, the unit commissioner, and the district operating committee. It establishes a customized plan or map that's periodically reviewed and updated to provide continuing improvement. Now, the detailed collaborative assessment is the roadbed on which the unit service plan is laid, and the journey to excellence metrics serve as the road signs that we use along the way. Now, once the unit service plan's been developed in collaboration with the unit key three, it's time to start moving down that road. And as the unit reaches each marker along the way, the commissioner reviews all of the information available in commissioner tools and in the rest of the My Scouting suite to identify just where the unit might need help and uses that information to link those needs to the resources available through the district operating committee. Now, this requires commitment from the district committee, and while the methods of gaining commitment may vary from one district to another, the goal really is to identify resources on that district committee uh, and looking through all the people there so that we can help meet those units' needs complete action items on the unit service plan, and then identify the accountability for related action items on the unit service plan. <coughs> now, the diligent use of commissioner tools, I think, really provides the commissioner with an efficient and effective way of making sure that the unit progresses towards its goals so then when it comes time to renew its charter, everything should be in place to ensure that the unit is chartered on time. Now, we've been saying that commissioners focus on 
four main things. Contact units and record their observations and commissioner tools. Support a unit's efforts in the continuous improvement process that we call the journey to excellence. Link unit needs to the district and or council resources. And then finally help units re renew their charter on time. Commissioner tools and the suite of programs that are now available to us online clearly gives commissioners the 21st century tools and techniques to adapt to the needs of units so that we can remain relevant and ensure impact. And Bob, I'll hand it back to you. All right. Thanks, Dave. So as we move to the next level of training, I want to refer to this as beyond the basics. Uh, we're, we're trying to move to where we can actually start having a better understanding of commissioner tools. So we need to get beyond this basic uh, hurdle of where we think we might be at. So much like the development of a good foundation and relationship with your unit key three, commissioner tools is going to work best if the proper foundations have been laid, like Dave talked about, and your commissioners already understand why commissioner tools is far more than an exercise of checking off boxes or making reports. If, you don't, if they don't understand the why of commissioner tools, they're going to struggle with anything that's beyond the basics. Many times we've seen where councils are struggling to achieve any amount of substantial uses of commissioner tools, and it's frequently traced back to the situation where either commissioners aren't being expected or, or uh, accountable to utilize the benefits, or they simply don't understand the benefits, also known as the why. So all great commissioners want to do all they can to help their units. It's in our DNA. We just need to help them understand why commissioner tools is the method to engage the unit, create the customized plan, have actionable information, and follow through on the plan. All of this aimed directly at helping our units prosper. This is what we're going to talk about tonight with the Beyond the Basics. We're going to talk about uh, what commissioner tools is not, reports about the key three relationships, unit service plans, what to do with them once they're created, how to improve them, the comprehension follow-up, and then the assessment exercises that are on the website. So we're going to start talking a bit about what Commissioner Tools is not. As we work to move beyond the basics and the mechanics of Commissioner Tools, we need to understand more clearly that commissioner, what Commissioner Tools is about. If we don't understand, our commissioners can't understand either when we go to train them. There are many numbers of ideas of what Commissioner Tools is. Let's take a moment to review a few myths and misconceptions. The first thing is that it's not just the new UVTS. UVTS was basically a, re a place to record visits, not contacts, but visits by commissioners to units. Granted, if you wanted, you could take several extra steps and really put some extra work into it, and you could get a little bit back, but not really much. Essentially, it's, it wasn't much more than a place to keep track of our commissioners. No reports, no training, no output like what we can get out of tools. Uh, the, another myth might be that it's simply a place where we track our commissioners' contacts. And if that's all it was, we would have just kept UVTS or updated it, perhaps. Commissioner tools, we can do so much more with it, and it it's the process around which we can deliver more effective unit service if we choose to do so. The method whereby we apply our bean counting skills, this is certainly not what Commissioner Tools is about. Commissioning has, is not about and has never been about bean counting, racking up numbers on a page so we look like we're having impact, making reports for the sake of it, or just checking off tasks so we can assign a certain status in JTE. That is not what we do. Commissioning is about serving more youth better through scouting. Commissioner Tools has the features true that let us crunch data for the good of helping our units though. But to call it a bean counting system just simply isn't correct. Uh, another uh, thing that Commissioner Tools is not is a single faceted system that we just don't need. The scouting world and the world in general has evolved and more so every day. The methods that we used in the past will not allow us to keep up with progress or even move to the higher level that we really need to go to. To be more effective and help our units deliver the best possible program, 
we have to be prepared to use all of our resources, not just a few. When used as designed, Commissioner Tools is a significant resource that we cannot ignore. I think Henry Ford said it best when he stated, if we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. We can't keep doing what we always have. We have to evolve the systems and the processes we use to help our units and youth, and most important, that includes our commissioners as well. Another myth is that it's too complicated for some commissioners to use. Simply is not the case. If we look at it and let ourselves be a little intimidated, we can be. But if we stop and break it down into what it really does, it's not a whole lot different than things that we should already be doing. In the past, we've created plans to help a unit. We still do that. We have asked our professionals in the past for memberships or training records or any number of other things. Now we can get those directly from Commissioner Tools. Previously, we could identify a need in a unit and ask the district committee for assistance. We still do that now as part of the unit service plan. All along, we've always supported JTE, always contacted our units, always identified their strengths and needs, always helped them recharge it. All of the things that we're supposed to do as commissioners and commissioner tools gives us a framework now around which all of those things can be done. Let's talk about one of the big parts here that we have available that we didn't have in the past, and this is reports. You'll see a screenshot of the reports that are available right now. This is a place that's just ripe for additional training and information. Currently, we have 14 reports available and more being developed and considered all the time. Within the Commissioner Tools group, we have a subgroup that's dedicated specifically to listening to feedback and future enhancements that are suggested. Reports are a frequent topic of discussion as well as how to improve them. With the old UVTS system, all we could do was enter data. If we wanted something back, we could do a lot of extra work and we got very little back. Even after all the, old, the old, all the extra work, really wasn't much usable data. Certainly nothing like what we have now. So a real quick description of the reports that we have. Start with at the top of this list of 14 is the assigned expired units. This displays a list of all of our expired units that are currently assigned to a commissioner. This information allows us to monitor the status of an expired unit in the hope that they may be revived. They may be expired due to any number of issues like paperwork delays, charter partner concerns, leadership needs, or whatever. Assigned units is the next one. It just displays a list of all of the units that have been assigned to a commissioner. The next one is, uh, I'm going to cover the next two, Commissioner Activity for 2014 and 15 shows the number of assigned contacts that have been made monthly by commissioners registered at the district or council level. This lets us monitor the activity of the commissioners who have been assigned to a unit. It allows administrative commissioners to know which unit commissioners are not making entries or contacts and who may need a little bit of that why coaching to help better support their units. Commissioner contact stats 20 and 14, I'm going to combine them. They're the same except for the year. This displays the number of contacts made monthly by each commissioner registered at the district or council level. Contacts are broken into two different buckets, we'll call it. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, assigned and additional contact, which is a contact made for a unit that you're not assigned to. The total number of assigned unit contacts and the percentage of assigned unit contacts are also displayed on this report. All the contacts are not included in the subtotal numbers. However, once you've downloaded it, you can manually uh, include that if you choose. All of these reports are downloadable uh, very easily into an Excel format as well. The next one would be Commissioner Recruitment, displays a list of potential commissioner candidates entered when a commissioner does a detailed assessment. This isn't filtered by date. Uh, this is a gold mine for us to use as we go about the process of trying to keep our ranks filled. The information is from a detailed assessment entered by unit commissioners who have seen the unit and have done the assessment and think there's a potential candidate in a unit. An administrative commissioner could be smart to monitor this report as well as encourage their commissioners to use this function to help with recruiting. 
District contact stats 2014 and 15 uh, displays the number of contacts made monthly for a unit, either at the district or council level. Only units within the selected or district are going to appear, though. Priority needs units. This is a very important report that we can get that we've never had before. Displays a list of, just as it says, all of our priority needs. These are identified in the detailed assessment. These are not filtered by date, either. This is a list of the units that are identified as needing priority help. It's easy to monitor all of our units, but we know that the ones that need our help at most are the priority units. This is a list of where we can find those quick and easy. Next one is under signed expired units, just as its name implies, displays a list of all of the units that are under signed and expired. Under signed units is, displays a list of our under signed units. Uh, this will let us monitor which units do not have a commissioner assigned as well as it alerts ADCs to recruit new commissioners to support those specific units. We still need to contact these units even if there's not a commissioner assigned. We're still responsible for that. But this is done easier by now we can utilize other commissioners or administrative commissioners as well because now we have that list. Unit Health 2014 and 15, very, very helpful report, especially for roundtable commissioners because this report not only shows well, Rick, your screen just dropped off. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Unit Health, though, the most very helpful report, especially for roundtable commissioners, uh, because the report not only shows the units, whether it's a new unit, there you go, or whether it was when it was initially chartered, shows when the last assessment was, was by who, along with the assessment type, whether that was a simple or detailed assessment, plus the unit health score, it also shows roundtable attendance, how many leaders from each unit was there for each month of the year. Perhaps uh, one of the most valuable reports, it gives us a look at all of our units' health scores. If our units have been contacted, the type of assessment, roundtable attendance, and if they're a new unit. Very, very important. Lots of great info on that report. So as you can see from the variety of information available, this is not just the new UVTS. There's a lot you can do with all of these reports. All this data helps us develop actionable information to help our units, which is why we're here. There's a lot there that we have never had available in the past, and the best thing you can do for yourself by far is go and click into each of those and see for yourself exactly what's there. Everything we do is about improving unit service so they can flourish. All of this information is yet another way we go about it. Here to explain one of the ways we can do stuff with this data, Dave's going to explain uh, one of the things that are, some of our councils are doing. There you go. <laughs> I am? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Hey, yeah, some council commissioners are using exports of the data from commissioner tools to create some very interesting and insightful reports and graphs using Excel pivot tables. Now, a pivot table allows you to download the raw Excel spreadsheet and manipulate it in a manner that fits your needs. It lets you boil down large amounts of data to a more useful, usable format with more impact. Now, it's been referred to as the single most powerful feature available in Excel. We're working on creating a video for this, but in the meantime, you can do an internet search for pivot tables and get a lot of info there. Now, we have already shared some of these with the president of the firm doing our development as examples of automated reports we'd really like to have tools come out with right off the bat so we don't have to do any more number crunching. Now, the options are nearly endless, and we could devote an entire hour to that alone. But the takeaway from this is that there are many new areas of information that can help us support a unit, as well as the training manager, the member manager. All of those drop downs are found on the main page of, commission, of our, the my.scouting sign in page. Now, with all of this information, we've got many new methods of, of helping units. Some are okay with just the raw numbers, others need something more. But this one-page table is really a great example of how the numbers 
aren't just for collecting to satisfy some worthless checkbox. Now, we can use this information to cut through that 30,000 cells worth of mind-numbing information to really get to the heart of why we are commissioners. Now, your council may not be as large as the example that's shown here, but this illustrates that all councils, regardless of size, can benefit from using the gold mine found in these reports. Now, many of the valuable pieces of information are contained here that to really help us do our jobs better. Priority needs, assessments, action plans, unit contacts, roundtables, training, and a whole myriad of information is at our fingertips in commissioner tools and at my.scouting, in the training manager and in the member manager. Take it away, Bob. All right, thank you. One of the very, very important parts, too, that we need to think about is as we go through the process uh, that we have to develop good relationships with our key three. We know that relationships are everything. We're never going to be able to complete a collaborative detailed assessment with a unit or in turn create a unit service plan if we don't have a good relationship with our key threes. This can uh, occasionally be a challenging situation though with some units and while it isn't necessarily strictly a training issue, we can improve this area by addressing the relevance of it and how it impacts the effectiveness of a collaborative detailed assessment. And then in turn, the extension of that is the creation of a unit service plan. Much of our effectiveness as a commissioner is based on relationships we build with our units and specifically with the key three in particular. Perhaps a good foundation to lay with the key three is to let them see that you have the same interest in scouting as they do, basically to help their youth. If we only do the minimum, they're going to reciprocate with the minimum of appreciation and trust. But if we're attentive to their needs and they see we're not just going through the motions of doing minimum, there's a much better chance of the relationship growing. The old expression of actions speak louder than words absolutely applies in this instance. If you attend their meetings, communicate effectively, bring good information to them, dress appropriately, and are sincere in offering your help, then it's going to be much easier for them to respect your thoughts and comments. Think for a moment, if you will, about how you personally go through the steps of accepting the person's input and thoughts. It's really no different for the unit except for there are three of them to gain the respect of. Even though it's been around for a while, the concept of a unit key three may still be foreign to some units. You may need to start with working more closely with just one of the three. And as the relationships are solidified work with the other members, as the opportunities present themselves. Put yourself in the place of the key three. How would you react to a message received via email out of the blue about something that they don't even know about called a collaborative detailed assessment that asks you to do more work about something you don't even understand from somebody you may not know and have no idea of why? A plan for success would not be to send out an email like that and then contact them later. Rather, it would be just the opposite. Discuss it. Once they're open to the idea, proceed with it. When beginning this discussion for a collaborative assessment, you need to be careful and pay attention to the attitude of the key three as you present the concept. Just as it is wise to help a commissioner understand the value of their service and impact that they can have, a unit key three will usually respond favorably if you're able to explain what's in it for them, which is back to the why to help with what that understanding there's a video that a commissioner can use to help a key three understand the benefit to the unit when completing a collaborative assessment. Education is a very powerful ally to have on our side. We need to use it to help our units understand how we want to help and impact them together when we utilize the detailed assessments. Every situation is different. There isn't a one-size-fits-all solution but this is a great opportunity for an ADC or district commissioner to be helpful with coaching and mentoring. Another piece of the puzzle could be that we want to create unit service plans for all of our units. So this is definitely something that's beyond the basics of just click and point and making entries. The unit service plan is customized, in-depth action plan that addresses unit strength and needs created by the findings of a collaborative assessment done with the key three. 
identify strengths and needs like we've talked about. There's a number of good videos that are online already that discuss all the different parts of why we do it and how to do it and all of the why about this. So use those when you train your commissioners so they understand the impact. While every unit's different, there's going to be varying degrees of success, it's a good thought to be careful when creating the very first unit service program with a unit. Nothing's going to kill future progress like an initial goal that's overly ambitious or realistically just can't be achieved. It frequently is a good idea to start with a plan that's achievable and work towards more lofty goals as comfort and confidence in the process grow. Best practices show us it's wise to not create more than three to four major goals to achieve during a six-month cycle with a unit service plan. An important point to remember is that the unit service plan helps us develop a very focused and target plan for the future of the unit, while the JTE measures what we have already achieved. So once we've created this, what do we do with it next? So much like any plan to be effective, it needs to be put into action if there's any hope for making improvements. The detailed assessment identifies a timeline for completion as well as accountability for who is supposed to do it and complete it by when. Actionable information is identified and acted upon. If the plan is implemented and a commissioner is in contact with the unit, the simple assessment comes into play. This provides frequent checkups on the progress of the unit service plan and any new information or actions that may be needed. Once the, the needs have been identified and addressed, progress is made towards these goals, it's probably time to consider scheduling another collaborative assessment. The standard for unit service plans is every six months when there's a change in unit leadership or more frequently as the situation may, may uh, dictate. Dave? Yeah, thanks, Bob. Now, it, we always want to try and improve everything that we do, and that holds true as well for the unit service plans. So we want to improve those unit service plans uh, that we've created because they go a long way towards highlighting the strengths and helping the unit identify their opportunities for improving. Now, as we repeat the process of creating collaborative assessments, and in turn, the unit service plans, we need to know that while we have helped the unit improve, there's more to do. We know that a unit is typically either growing or decaying. We work to not let the decay happen. So that leaves us needing to support and strengthen the unit. Like good commissioners, good units are always looking for ways to improve. The collaborative assessment is a great tool to help us identify those opportunities where improvement can occur, areas that are already strong and chances for new growth. And as we work on the easiest targets of improvement, we identify and move on to those that may be more of a challenge. But that's what we really need to do. And as time goes on, the units are going to become more and more stable as it embraces a culture of change, self-assessment, and continuous improvement. These things don't just happen. There has to be a concerted effort to move into this process and embrace these changes. All right. Now, comprehension follow-up is another very uh, important area where we want to talk about going beyond the basics. Training is only effective if it's understood. For a mission, I'm sorry, for a message to be effective, it has to be sent as well as received. You may teach it, but that doesn't necessarily mean they learned it. A commissioner can hear the information about how to go about the mechanics of using the system, but that doesn't mean <clears throat> they received a message about the why. If they don't understand how commissioner tools fits in with their role of unit service, they're very unlikely to perform to their full capacity. This will show in any number of areas, such as poor retention of units or scouts, low JTE scores, low contacts, no collaborative assessments, unit service plans, very few assessments being done, entries being late on a routine basis, poor, three, relate, poor, excuse me, 
poor key three relationships being built and much more. Follow-up's a great step for the ADC to take to make sure that the points are being understood and comprehended so that we're being sure that we're getting effective training. No doubt that we've all seen that commissioner who we thought would be awesome, but just isn't living up to our expectations. Just because somebody isn't doing a great job doesn't mean they can't or won't. It may be an indication of a lack of com comprehension of their roles and responsibilities, of the resources or expectations. We all do better when we understand the why of a task we're training for. Train for the why and the rest will follow. Now, if there are assessment exercises available on the website, there are sample assessments for PACs, crews, teams, and troops. These are samples, as I said, and it gives you a brief scenario about a unit that might be found at any given time. It may describe issues with finance, training, membership, leadership, or something along those lines. Uh, they go through a step-by-step -step process. You, you basically you rate a unit giving, using the assessment, identify, show strengths and weaknesses, identify an opportunity to link those district commissioner, those district committee needs. You make some SMART goals. Once you've got those done, you create simple assessments, intermediate assessments, and collaborative assessments. You do some role playing and whatnot. This is all in, contained inside of that assessment when you download it from the website. You also go to the step of creating a service plan, a unit service plan, and a detailed assessment. Uh, again, where you assign responsibility and time frame. You also make a roundtable entry to, that provides feedback. This exercise is a great opportunity for you to use. It can be completed fairly quickly in a half an hour or so. You can also expand it to include additional discussions if you would like about other resources or other options. And the important takeaway is that these exercises are great for your commissioners to learn through the specific steps of what ultimately becomes a unit service plan with an end goal serving more youth better through scouting. These exercises are a great icebreaker also to help your council and district move to that ideal situation. So this is a recap of what we've talked about. This is far from all of the things that would be considered beyond the basics, but this is what we've talked about, what Commissioner Tools is not, the reports, the relationships, unit service plans, and what do we do with them and how to improve them. You know, very important to make sure we have the comprehension and uh, those assessment exercises that have been put up on the website. So the last thought I want to leave you with is that we have some choices to make. We do have a couple of choices, and you can continue as you have in the past, and you're going to keep getting the same results. Or you can struggle with the idea of collaborative assessments, unit service plans, and improving contacts. But you can also choose to actually embrace the system, learn about the why, and know that Commissioner Tools is the way for us to deliver great unit service. The tool in our toolbox will help us impact the most important reason we have for being here, which is our youth. We all know good programs breed good units. Commissioner Tools supports and nurtures those good programs. Our systems and resources are only as good as we all make them. It may be a fabulous plan, but if it only sits on a shelf, it's not going to do anything. This is the only way we can all have any hope of our units prospering. And with that, Rick, it's back to you. Well, thanks, Bob and Dave, and uh, thank you, everyone, that's uh, stuck with us so far. The next three slides are really just a few resources that are available for you, and we're going to slowly go through them as uh, you're preparing some questions. We've already got a few questions that we'll uh, immediately address, and uh, uh, you can look at those resources. They're available uh, through multiple mediums. But I would encourage you, if you need to, uh, go look at the biweekly summary status reports. Uh, those are on the website for the commissioners under uh, my uh, scouting, and I'm sorry, at scouting.org. And uh, you'll see all of those are posted. They're up to date right now. Uh, additionally, you can get support locally from your champions, your council commissioner, hopefully. If you're uh, still not getting the answers you need, you can email commissionertools at scouting.org or phone folks at member care, and uh, 
There is a special email if you have an issue that is not commissioner tool specific, but maybe it's a systemic issue, it's a my scouting related type issue. Um, now, uh, if you've got some questions, and I'm going to leave this slide up here uh, until the end, um, here are some ways that you can uh, get to us in the future. You can send emails, as I said, to commissioner tools at scouting.org. If you've got best practice ideas, like maybe you've got a great report in a pivot table or something along those lines like you saw tonight, uh, send that to commissioner.support at scouting.org. That's a, a slightly different email. And of course, both Dave, Bob, and myself, we all have personal emails and we have our Facebook page. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to our questions. And uh, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to ask if Darlene Sprague uh, wouldn't mind talking a little bit about a question that Stephen Marquez was asking with regards to uh, how the counting works in the system and uh, all the rest of that. And uh, there seems to be a little bit of confusion there. Darlene, I've unmuted you if you're able to talk. Can you hear me, Rick? Yes, we can. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I I know the the, um, the the point of Steve's question, but I will tell you how uh, things are counted. Here we are talking about that being counting again. But um, just so you know, every contact that is entered in Commissioner Tools is in fact brought across to the JTE system um, when they pull the data once a month, and that actually happens sometime around, and depending on the day of the week it is, around the ninth of the month uh, is when I actually get the report. So I'm expecting to get the, um, uh, the August reports uh, any day now to be sent out. And the report that I refer to is called the District Summary Report. Some or all of you may be receiving it. I send it out to the area commissioners and ask them to push it to council commissioners and in turn down through to the district commissioners. And what this does is it shows the number of uh, contacts that have been made uh, year to date, uh, by, and it actually shows it by month uh, for each district in a council. Now, because uh, we had some councils that have come across during this calendar year, it actually brings forward the uh, visits that were in UVPS and add the appropriate months up until you have um, converted over to Commissioner Tools. So every contact, every visit is counted. If for some reason you feel that they are, your report is not correct, you can either send an email to the Commissioner Tools at scouting.org and they will get it to me and we will do some research. But um, the premise is that all of those um, uh, completed uh, contacts are counted. Thank you, Darlene. Appreciate it very much. Um, I'm learning as we go through this that when I switch back and forth and mute or look for questions occasionally, what's being displayed goes away. So uh, please uh, bear with us as we go through that. Uh, I'm going to look at, for additional questions. We had one that uh, came from uh, Bob Chamberlain, and I'm just going to unmute Bob with my again. Okay, so Bob, I have unmuted you, and um, if you wanted to uh, in engage in the question that you had specifically with regards to uh, ad hoc reports and that ability. Uh, uh, for the benefit of the rest of the group on the, the call, um, Bob was asking specifically whether or not we could get more information or we used to be able to through UVTS with our ad hoc reporting capability. In essence, with UVTS, you were able to download the entire database, which is only about 30 data fields uh, per entry. Comparatively, you've probably heard this number before, there's about 10 times as much data per entry right now. Um, so beyond just the fact that there's a lot more data, uh, other things have happened and some of that data that's available to you now 
uh, starts to get people concerned about uh, our PII, personally identifiable information uh, requirements, and not putting all that information in one place. That's why if you go into Member Manager, uh, you can't get a member manager list with somebody's name, their address, their phone number, and their email all in one download. Instead, you can get those in pieces. Uh, now, to the uh, need for an ad hoc report, I will tell you that um, we, as a, a part of the Commissioner for this Focus Group, have brought that up on a number of occasions and are looking for a way where we can uh, get something along those lines or as close to it as possible. But uh, Bob, I've unmuted you if you've got more on that issue specifically. Well, I'm not hearing Bob at the moment. Um, looks like he doesn't have a voice, so unmuting him didn't help. Says so the data dump could be programmed to not download sensitive info. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, we're, that that's an idea that's being looked into. So um, it's one of those things that is in our queue of enhancements and um, those types of things that we need. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is to uh, get these enhancements uh, actually into production. That's part of what sub uh, subgroup two within the Commissioner Tools Focus Group is working on right now. In fact, we have a homework assignment due by next Tuesday with regards to prioritizing our top three picks. Um, moving on to a different individual, uh, Richard McGeff was asking, where can we get the slides from tonight's training? Um, we will get those posted. Uh, we will work with Darlene, who uh, is the keeper of the commissioner's website on the uh, national page, but we'll work to have those uh, put on the national website. Uh, somebody else wanted to know, can I print my meeting minutes? Um, you can actually uh, save a file for this. It says save notes. Um, I'm not sure which version of AT&T Connect you have. If you have the same one that I have, if you click under the word conference, there's a drop-down menu, there's something that says save notes. And that will save uh, the actual notes. It will not save the slides. If you took screenshots, of course, that, that will work that. Um, so um, let's see. Please raise your hand if you've got a question or just send that uh, via note. Uh, I will unmute people as we can or as appropriate if you need to be unmuted. Uh, no info on the screen. Okay, so we'll put that back up. Apparently, just can't multitask here as much as uh, I know I can. The computer won't. So um, I'm putting that back up for a second or two, and then I'm going to have to look or um, send questions to Bob and Dave as well. They're also not muted, and they can uh, jump in here as well. Uh, Bob and Dave, have you gotten any questions? Uh, I, heard, I saw a couple pop up as I was going, but I really couldn't pay attention to them, so I don't think I have any other than and Richard's. Dave, same here. Okay. Well, I'm going to take another quick look, and if there aren't any questions, uh, remembering that old uh, instructional adage with regards to not having a meeting just for the meeting's sake, we may end a, a little less than an hour uh, maybe only 55 minutes long, but that's okay. So I'm going to take a last look for questions. Um, I've got a thank you. Somebody's going to email some specifics to research to Commissioner Tools, and um, another thank you. And I don't see any hands up at this point in time, so I'm going to stop recording this and.